Get your tickets, because we're looking at the music theory of the existential state fair that is Sonic 3's Balloon Park, a song that captures the level's atmosphere of buzzing excitement and bright fun. You don't need to look any further than the shape of the melodies right in the opening phrase. These curvatures represent the slopes of a roller coaster with their characteristic peaks and valleys. And here we see seats dangling from chains on the swing chair ride. The song uses abrupt changes in tempo to capture the start, stop, fast, slow energy of a roller coaster by alternating between a standard medium tempo and measures that are sped up in double time. In this drum sheet music, look how we transition from section B to the finale in section C, speeding up to double time, with the key snares colored red here for your reference. It's straightforward enough to double the tempo for the final sequence, but Balloon Park uses this technique on two other occasions in the form of short bursts in the song Section A. This speed of medium, then fast, then back to medium is just like the alternating speed of a roller coaster car, a speed that varies depending on whether you're going up or down a slope. Now, you gotta give the songwriter a lot of credit. This is a song that is only ever heard during the two-player competition mode, but instead of phoning it in, they were generous enough to give us three separate sections. Meanwhile, a song in a pivotal level like Lava Reef only gets two sections. So if that's not enough, not only does Balloon Park have three separate sections, but the first section itself has two distinct parts, A1 and A2. What distinguishes them? All it is is, you take a melody in section A1, and then craft a melody that harmonizes above it, and this gives you the section A2 corresponding melody line. As an example, here's the opening phrase of section A1. So if we take this framework of notes and then slide it up to harmonize, we get this. A similar thing happens for the swing chair melody phrase. It starts out like this. And then we slide it up like this for section A2. We're gonna linger on this swing chair rides harmonized melody because it just goes berserk with the accidentals in an awesome way. In the past, we've talked about how Lava Reef has one accidental right out of the gate, Desert Palace has one accidental in the very last measure, but in Balloon Park, we're going bonkers with them all over the place, and an amusement park is the perfect setting for that. As 8-Bit Music Theory pointed out in his video about Paper Mario, accidentals are great for conveying a lighthearted, goofy experience that doesn't take itself too seriously. If you look at the sheet music itself, by indicating each accidental as a red note, it becomes apparent that in total, these two measures use more accidentals than chord tones. The song is a wacky romp, and it makes no secret about it. So for these two measures of Balloon Park, the composer staked out this area of the keyboard. The green circles indicate chord tones, and in the meantime, the composer used every accidental in this range signified by the red circles. Watch how during these two measures, every single key is used, so none are left out. There's no gaps in between and hardly any wiggle room, just like when you go to a carnival and have to navigate the unruly crowds, sidestepping baby strollers to fight for your place in line at the Tilt-A-Whirl. This is hardly a portrait of social distancing. Hidden within the chaos of all this rowdiness is quite the fun easter egg. Of course, plenty has been said about the secret hidden connections between Sonic 3 and MJ, but not a lot of attention has been paid to M. Listen to this clip of Balloon Park and pay attention to the blue notes. Does this melodic phrase sound familiar? It should be recognizable because you've been hearing it in advertisements for more than 15 years. This striking similarity was pointed out in 2016 by YouTube user Empty Spotlight. And well done, Empty Spotlight. To demonstrate the similarity, let's hear them back to back. First, the McDonald's jingle. Next, the snippet from Balloon Park. 
upon forensic examination, we can see that almost all the notes are chemically identical with regard to pitch and timing. The only exception is here, and even then, the only difference is that this C sharp is nudged forward by a quarter note, with a B leading into it as a sort of de facto grace note. And this isn't the only time Sonic has crossed paths with Mickey D's. For that matter, the very existence of the Ann Knuckles meme is solely due to the McDonald's Corporation. The whole reason Sega split Sonic 3 into two separate releases was because the development of the game grew overly ambitious and they would have delayed it, but couldn't because Sega was committed to a release time frame due to a scheduled McDonald's Happy Meal toy promotion. One does not simply reschedule a Happy Meal promotion. So they released Sonic 3 as the first half of the true game, and then released Sonic and Knuckles later that year, which gave us the resulting lock-on Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and the rest is history. Nowadays, the whole and Knuckles bit is a cultural institution. There have even been entire YouTube channels whose channel names pay homage to it. So to wrap things up, we've arguably saved the best, most enchanting part for last. During the final epic double time sequence, there are two supporting melodies on synthesizer going rapid fire in the background. The first one plays the note E, which is the tonic, first scale degree, going up and down by octaves. The second synth melody establishes its home base on the third scale degree, going up and down to the fourth and second, but always returning to the core third in between. Now, the thing is, if I hadn't transcribed all of this out note by note, I never would have noticed that when you look at how these two synth melodies layer together, there is not a single note that overlaps simultaneously. The two melodies are meant to accompany each other, but never at any point get in each other's way. In other words, if you took each note in the second synth and drew an arrow straight upward, none of the lines would intersect with the top melody's notes. So of course, by extension, the same occurs if you took each note in the first synth and drew an arrow down. Each note is afforded its own brief but integral opportunity to contribute to the bright, flashy atmosphere, much like the thousands of lights encountered at an energetic carnival. It's sort of strange that Sonic 3 has two carnival-themed levels, the other being Carnival Night, but why not? Balloon Park is hardly an ignored, forgotten track. It was remade in Sonic Generations not once, but twice. It has a hidden connection to the McDonald's Empire. It establishes itself in the pantheon of iconic carnival-themed levels, right up there with Platform Master's Carnival Esta. It's a song that just sets you up perfectly for a night of corn dogs, cotton candy, and bumper cars.